Hi everyone, today's video I'm going to go over a new feature that we just released this morning that I think a lot of you are going to be really excited about. Uh, it's going to save a massive amount of time for those of you that book groups, especially those of you that do not book air for your groups, because I've heard time and time again from our users that one of the biggest headaches of dealing with groups is collecting and organizing all the flight schedules for clients uh, so their transfers can be set up. So prior to this update, uh, if you wanted to collect air um, from your clients, you would have to you know, have them forward you their email confirmation from their airline, and then you would have to go into their reservation. We'll just use Daniel Allen here as an example. And you would have to manually add the flights. And then once you add those flights, you would put in all the details, and you could check this box and then select the passengers that are on that. You no longer have to do any of that. Actually, the whole process can be automated for you. So I'll show you how to do that today, a couple of different things, ways that it can be done, some of the different features in this system. So follow along. Uh, so for starters, the first thing you may want to do is set up some email templates to use to send that to the client. Now, for those of you that are admins, there's kind of two different sections, one or the other, that you're going to want to go to. Um, for ICs, you may or may not have to set these up depending on how your agency is set up. So for anyone, if you go to settings and email templates, not auto email templates, just email templates, if this says they are enabled like mine is, this is where you want to set these up. If it says uh, they are disabled with the button saying enable here, that means you are using the agency level uh, email templates. Now, if you're not an admin, you can't edit those. So you're going to have to have your owner or admin enter a template for you. And what they will do is they will go here to settings and system settings and default email templates and set it up in here. Uh, but I think the majority of users have these enabled, the user level ones. So again, settings, oops, sorry, uh, settings, email templates, check that they're enabled. And then you're going to want to go to the flight collecting request. And you can set up several different versions of this. You can see I already have set up one this morning. Uh, but if I wanted to set up an additional one, I could do that. The main thing with this is you want to say whatever you would typically say to a client when you're sending them an email saying, hey, I need your flight information so I can set up your transfers. But you also want to include the group form URL. That will create a link to a form that they can fill out to submit their flight details. Now, if you want to completely automate it, you can go into your utilities and you can set up an email group for that, which, again, I've already done just to make this video somewhat shorter. Um, so in here, I created one for Group Air. Now, if you're already using these for your groups, you would probably just add it as an additional email within that group that you've already created that you're using. Um, but, you know, in this scenario, let's say I didn't have any email group email set up to send to my group, so I just created a totally new one. So you'll select, you know, name it whatever you want. You will select profile slash group as your trigger screen because that is the screen in which you want to apply it to. And then I went ahead and set up two of them. The first one is uh, request number one. second one is request number two. So in request number one, I put in you know, the template that I want to send them. So please submit your flight information. Again, this is where I told them. And you want to use the uh, group form URL merge field here. And then set when you wanted to send in relation to, say, the trip date or the final payment due date, X amount of days before or after. So I've said 90 days before the trip date. Now, one other thing to note here is there's a checkbox that you're likely going to want to check. Um, this one, only send to client with no air reservation component link. So what that will do is with these email groups, when you set them up at a group level, it sends those emails to everyone that is part of the group. Absolutely everyone. Lead passengers, additional attendees, status doesn't matter. Uh, but if you check this box, it will only send that form to clients who you have not collected their air for yet. So in this case, I would want to check this box and then save. So. Uh, again, as you can see, I've set up two. So in the second one, I've got it to send 70 days before the trip date. So 20 days later, maybe I'm a little bit more urgent with the wording that I use in here. Um, so I'd set that up to send two of them. Hopefully two would be enough, uh, but I know sometimes clients may take three or four, or you could manually send to those who have still not submitted their error after the first two have gone out automatically. So you can set those up as well, and then you can apply those to uh, the group profile, which I've done here already. So you can see um, one of these went out this morning, and this one will go out in March. All right, so um, you will also see another section 
on your group profile. So if you go down here, you can see, you know, we've got the trips linked to the group. I've got all the, the uh, rooms linked to their trip uh, down here. But the new section here will be the flights linked to group. So I've got, you can see by the reservation numbers, I've got three bookings so far. And the only people who have sent their flights in are Mark, Julie, and Sophia. Their family has sent their flights. I still don't have Stephen's family or Daniel's family, uh, their flight schedule. So that would send out automatically again if I set up the email group. Or let's just say I didn't have that set up and I just want to manually send an email to, let's just say, Daniel and his family, or just to him, I guess, in this case, to say, hey, we need your flights. So what I could do to manually send that, since I've set up that email template, I can just click here. And when you select this first, you have to select the profile. Sorry, I just had to pause and save, resave the screen because I had been playing around with this and testing. But anyway, so when you first click it, all of this will be blank. So first, you're going to select the profile, uh, who you want to send it to. So let's say I want to send this to Daniel. And then which trip. The reason this is here is in, in the event that maybe one person has two rooms, maybe they have a large family, or maybe they are paying for someone else's room, so they have two trips under there, um, or two reservations under there, or two trips, I guess you could say, under their profile, one for each uh, room that they have. In this case, Daniel just has one room for him and his family, so there's only going to be one trip shown here. So I'm going to select this, and then this is which template do you want to load. So I only have one, so I can either send an empty or open an empty email and type it from scratch, uh, which you probably aren't going to ever do, or you can use the template that you have created. So I'll click this, and I will click Submit. And it will open up an email ready for you to send to him. And you can see here, this is that link. So he's going to click on this link and he's going to fill this form out. Now, just again, to keep the video shorter, I went ahead and opened this link before I started recording and I filled out most of it. So this is the one that I've started filling out um, for Daniel and his family. Now, one thing to note on here. So let's say, for example, just for a second, let's say that Daniel is maybe traveling uh, prior to this this destination wedding. So, you know, he wants to go, but he's in a different city. So he's going to have to take a different flight there or maybe even flight there and back is going to be different from what uh, Amanda and Sarah are taking. So I did not select his name. Now, if you have any clients that are on a trip that are not selected here, when the client gets to the very bottom of this form, it will ask, are there any additional guests in your room that are, you know, not arriving on these flights? So let's say that, you know, Sarah is filling this out for her family um, and she wants, she knows Daniel's flight schedule. She could say, yes, I want to enter their flights where she could now select Daniel's name for this set of flights. Or she could just say, you know, yes, they will enter their own flights and that will go away or no, that's everyone. So let's just select no here and let's add Daniel's name here, just saying that they are all coming in and, and traveling back home on the same flights. So they are going to fill out again. <clears throat> we try to make it pretty clear to them that even if they have, say, connecting flights both ways, this is just the flight to your destination. So the flight coming into Cancun in this example. And then same thing for the return flight. This is the first flight on the return home because that's all we need to know about. We don't care about their second flight on the way home. Um, now, you can also, in the event that they have children that need car seats, they can select, um, you know, say one and put in the child's weight. Or in this case, um, I think I set up his daughter is like 11 years old, so she doesn't need a car seat. So they're going to fill all this out, and they're going to click Submit, and they're going to get a thank you message. Now, when they submit that, you and the client will both receive an email. I don't have my email open, but I copied and pasted the, the text of the email. So you're going to receive an email like this that will let you know who filled it out um, and kind of their details here. So you'll receive that, and they will too. So it gives them an opportunity to double-check to make sure um, that everything is accurate. Now, one of the nice things about this as well is you know, this is going to send to everyone if you're automatically sending it with an email group. And so let's say it's like, a, you know, in this case, um, this is Mark and Julie. So Mark and Julie both received this email. And let's say, you know, Julie filled it out because she's better about checking her email. And then Mark comes in here and tries to fill it out. I mean, um, I'm sorry, that's not Mark and Julie. That's a group name. This is still Daniel's. Um, anyway, so Daniel fills it out. And then Amanda goes to fill it out. These will be grayed out. So basically, it's kind of a safeguard so that the flight information can't be entered more than once for the same room of people. So these are all grayed out. That tells your client that someone within their room already submitted their flights for them. Now, what that does in the system, 
for them uh, filling that out is a couple of things. So let's just go ahead and save this so it's refreshed. First, if we go down to that new section here, you'll see now that I have all of their fights. So I'm only missing Steven and his families. Everyone else has this green check mark. So you know, once you get going, you're just going to want to look for all green check marks. Anybody that has a red X, you may want to reach out to them. Or again, if you already have it automated, it will do that for you. So the way it gets this green check mark is if we go into, let's go into uh, Mark's trip here or Mark's reservation because he filled out the form as well already. So if I go into his reservation, it's going to actually add flights for me, check this box to um, show it on the group info page, and then select the people that are on that flight. It will also hide it from the invoice by default because you didn't book it. So if for some reason you were going to send that another invoice to the client at some point after these flights have been submitted, you don't want that to show on there to make it look like it's something that they booked through you. And then for yourself here, there will be a comment that it was added via the flight collector form. So again, just to let you know, or if you have an assistant helping you out with your bookings or doing things in VCRM, they will know that that was not something that your agency booked. That was something that the client filled out. Now we're still working on a couple of other things. Um, one of those is we're going to add somewhere in here a way to edit the car seats and the car seat weight um, in the event that a client messed up and maybe they selected one when they need two, or maybe they selected two when they only need one. Right now, as of today, there's not a way to fix that uh, from your VCRM account. We will update that, and it will likely be somewhere in here where you'll have options to delete or change or edit or whatever you need to do to make it correct. Um, so anyway, when it adds all this stuff in here now, if I were to go into their group profile and I check this box, I can open this up, and it will show you a summary of all of the flights, and you can see here. So. Mark and Julie need a car seat for Sophia. I think she's two years old, so she weighs 36 pounds. They need one car seat. So, uh, you know, that's on the way and back for their transfer. So it'll note that if you had multiple children, it would show, you know, say two or three and then different weights for each child. So they'll know what size car seat to provide to that client's family. Um, the other thing that I believe we will be working on in the very near future is a report to export kind of this stuff into Excel. At this point in time, I'm not sure if it's just going to be a standalone report in system reports that you can run, or possibly there may be a button here that you can click um, to just export this section down to Excel. Um, this would be easier, obviously, but I'm not sure how doable that is on the, the development side, but it is something we are aware of and we'll probably uh, be work, working on in the very near future. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much everything on this new feature. So uh, give it a try and give us any feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.